Hi guys, welcome to On Track GP. A very good evening. It's very late, but Sam's here. We're going to talk all things qualifying. Sam, how are you? I'm really good, thanks. Yeah, as you said, it's quite late. I'm quite tired, but yeah, person through. Yeah, and I'm not in Austin, unfortunately, so the time zone is a bit no. difficult. It's much calmer whereabouts we are than it is over in Texas. Um, mm -hmm. Sam, a really good qualifying session, I, I felt. It certainly kept me awake. What's your overall thoughts on the whole session? Yeah, I thought you're right. I thought it had a lot of um, good talking points. Obviously, you had some big names leaving quite early, especially the sure. Aston Martin teams, and then obviously Max a bit later on. So, yeah, I think it was really enjoyable. It was sort of one of those times where it actually looked like a lot of teams had a chance at getting pole, which is not something that we've said a whole lot this season. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I think hopefully it's a bit of a prediction for what could happen next year if all the teams start to get their act together. Um, let's start with Aston Martin, a team that did uh, get their act together at the start of the year. What happened today out in Q1, Alonso and Stroll? What happened? Yeah, it was just like, I think probably the worst Friday they could have asked already. Like <laughs> yeah. They had minimal running in, in free practice. So like, it's a sprint weekend. You need to make the most of your free only practice session. And they very much did not do that. Stroll barely got out. Alonso barely did any laps. So like, that was the worst possible start for them. And then, yeah, they both just went out in Q1. And I think the most worrying thing for them is it won't be like it's they didn't go out because there was a mistake as such. Like it was just performance based. Like both cars yeah. were really slow. Like Alonso said he, he had a bit of traffic, but I think everyone had traffic. Like, and that's that's not really yeah. an excuse. And I think even Alonso sort of admitted it, admitted it wasn't an excuse. Yeah, I think that's the most concerning thing. Like they had a new upgrade to this weekend. Their car should have been better. And yet, they're starting, I can't remember the name, but like we're all back into Q1. Like it's a dreadful Absolutely. time for them. And, and if they've got that, if they haven't got the speed in qualifying, it's not going to be there for the race, is it? So the chance of them getting any kind of points this weekend does seem quite optimistic for them. Do you think it's a problem? You mentioned they're bringing a new package and a kind of a new upgrade to the car. A lot of teams have done that. It's worked for, say, Mercedes, for example, with Lewis. We'll get on to that. It's a silly way to bring an upgrade package when you've got a sprint weekend you've only got that mm -hmm. one practice session and you're thrown at the deep end was it the wrong weekend to bring it i mean it's difficult really because we're sort of in this period of, this, of the season where there's just a lot of sprint races like we had one in qatar yeah. like we've got another few coming up like there's not a whole load of time to test really and if you think about the circuits we're going to obviously we've got a few that we've been to before like mexico and sao paulo but then we've also got vegas as well so like that's an entirely cool. new track so I doubt anyone's going to bring any upgrades to that because it'd be it'd be suicide basically to do that. So I think yeah. this was probably their their best chance to do it, but it just ultimately didn't work out because they needed a bit more running time to sort of work out how to get the best out of it. And just the format of a sprint means that's literally impossible. Like you have an hour, and as Aston Martin had problems, like they had no time at all, and then you straight into qualifying. So yeah, I think Alonso was a little bit annoyed, but I think I can sort of understand where the team were coming from, why they decided to do it this weekend and not save it for another one, really. I think, and as you say, we're coming towards the end of the season now. It, and I think Alonso said it in his, uh, his press conference after, we're just getting ready for next year. Let's learn what happened this weekend and go again. Another team, both drivers that got dumped out was Williams, Logan Sargent, home race, same old. Um, yeah. But Alex Albon, he's, I feel like he's had quite a good season. What went wrong for Williams? Was it just on the day, wrong timings, things like that? I just think it's the track, really. I think this, the story of this season has really been cars are so dependent on the track. And, like, we've seen McLaren do well at places, we've seen Ferrari do well at places. And the one place that Williams does well is is a long straight. And Cota, it doesn't really have a load of those. It's got a lot of high-speed sections, but a lot of, like, twists and bends in there. And that, that just doesn't suit itself to the Williams car, which is just, like, an absolute no. rocket, rocket ship on a straight line, but not so much elsewhere in the corners. So, yeah, I think that was just the problem. Like, the fact that album went out as well i think that sort of explains that it was probably the car like if it was sergeant that went out we'd probably say oh that, that's down <laughs> to the driver but like the fact that album went out as well sort of justifies the car wasn't great and i think um i think sergeant's in particular is to be quite disappointed because it's obviously his home race i think you're absolutely right um holkenberg was the one that kind of really really shocked me that first lap that he did in q1 he was two tenths quicker than everyone else has home race in, in terms of for them and then he gets dumped out in Q1. The track was improving throughout that session. Mm -hmm. He'll be gutted, won't he? Yeah, and it was a case of track limits, like as Max found out later in the session. Like, I don't know what happens to Hulkenberg in qualifying, but he becomes <laughs> so quick all the time. It's unbelievable. Like, he's, he's been one of the best qualifiers all year. Like, yes, he hasn't got a pole or stuff like that, but compared to where he should be, he's been so good. And I think, unfortunately, like, like a number of drivers are going to realise, well, have realised today and will realise again tomorrow in the spring qualifying, Track limits is a really big problem on this circuit. Like, if you're a little bit over, you're out. And that was just the case with Hulkenberg. He was just pushing a little bit too much. 
his track got his time got deleted and it, saying that he only went down to p16 like that's how quick he was like one of his warm-up laps was good enough to get p16 but unfortunately yeah he headed out but again it was another good qualifying performance even if he did go out the earliest stage possible disappointing for him disappointing for Haas. just quickly on track limits because lots of drivers got caught out last time in qatar again <laughs> what's your thoughts on it are they being a little too strict are rules rules how do you see it yeah yeah i think it's a really difficult one i think i think it's good to have it that it's a uniform rule and like everyone sticks to it if you go outside the white line that's it kind of thing but at the same time like how much time are they getting really like it's really really minimal margins like if they went flying off by like a meter you'd be like well yeah obviously they've gone way too quick into that corner that's fair enough but you look at these drivers and they're going fraction of centimeters over the line like i think it's just very I don't know like it seems very like specific to sort of attack the drivers like that but like i said like i think you have to have a very strict rule and said if you go over the white line you're over the white line kind of thing but in a way i'd sort of i'd like to see it where like okay go as fast as you want like use as much of the track as you want but and if you if you do too much and you end up crashing that's your fault kind of thing like just yeah. give them the best chance to give the absolute quickest lap and like they'll probably still be quite near the track they're not going to go flying out for no, no reason, exactly that it's risk versus reward you're right and so then that's q1 out was as we said alonso stroll alban sergeant and nico huckenberg um and talking of nico Hulkenberg, danny ricardo we saw him back this weekend he did make it to q2 uh, he had a lap time deleted as well so it was sonoda joe bottas magnuson and ricardo q2 i thought it was a little bit it was a weird session in a way because lando norris and the mclaren struggled and then we also know what lando went to do a little bit later on um how did you see that part of the section? Because it was really close with Russell um, and Perez as well. They only squeezed him right towards the end. It was a weird one. Yeah, I, I do sort of wonder why both Mercedes and Red Bull left their drivers so vulnerable. Like you said, like mm. they, they were way, way closer than they even would have wanted to be. And I think Q2 to me sort of just seemed like, OK, let's get rid of like the middle teams. Like It was very much <laughs> a culling of like, yeah, like, right, we're getting to the serious stuff now. You guys need to leave. Like, we've all done it with that kind of thing. And just from Ricardo, like... I don't think that would be like the performance he was hoping for in his first race back. Like, yes, he's probably going to go out of Q2 anyway, but the fact that he finished behind Sonoda doesn't look great for someone who's sort of coming back and going like, look at me, I'm back now, I'm going to do really well. And like, hasn't worked out that well to, to begin with. But yeah, like I said, Q2 was sort of like a middling session where we sort of like just trying to get the drivers, all the quick ones through. So we get exciting Q3. But I think even then we were getting hints that Q3 could be really exciting because we haven't, I think it was like Leclerc went top and then Hamilton went top. So like yes. that was sort of giving an idea that, okay, Q3 might not be the Max Verstappen show that we've come, become so used to this year. I think you're right. It was an indication for me that Red Bull, um, I think they said in commentary as well, that they'd be looking over their shoulders a little bit. Hold on, what's happening here? Hamilton's back near the front. So is, so is the Ferraris. Um, but yeah, quickly with, with Q2, there was a moment Carlos Sainz wasn't best pleased with, with Sonoda. Mm -hmm. Traffic, it was a bit of an issue today. And it always is in qualifying why is it at this particular track is it the format of qualifying do we need more time how do these how can we iron these issues out yeah i think it's just the nature of the circuit really i think it just sort of lends itself to drivers want to get so for a driver they want to have like completely clean air they don't want to have another car that's just down the road for them because that affects their lap time and i think we saw that i think it was in q1 or q2 where verstappen was following behind perez going into the last corner and his car kicks out because he's in the dirty air of perez yeah and that's they don't want that as a driver because that does have quite a big effect. So what they tend to do is like they, they'll slow up a lot as they approach the start line so they can get a quick lap. But then, of course, that has a knock on effect that all the other drivers arriving at the scene are also going to get slowed down. So in a way, the race director has set a thing saying you have to go a minimum. You have to complete a lap of a minimum time. So if you go to slow that, you're in trouble. We've had a few drivers who oh, I think have had to go to the stewards about that. It's going too slow. But yeah, you just get these circuits at times where like, it just sort of happens like there's a lot of bendy bits it's not like a load of straights where you can easily get past each other so yeah i think traffic's always going to be a problem but i think the best drivers will work out a way it's also a lot of team management you really need your team to sort yeah. of play because obviously they've got the maps they've got the data like all you've got is your wing mirrors and like that's quite <laughs> hard to see a flying f1 go car go by you so yeah it takes a lot of good communication to get a good lap and a good timing as well like when do you send your car out who's out already kind of thing and factoring the fact that the track's just going to get quicker and quicker as the session goes on it's very tactical it always has been and i've always as felt as well i think it'd be harder to be a driver on track and get out of the way than actually just do a clean 
flying lap is difficult. But yeah, out of Q2, you said, we, as you said, just got rid of uh, the dead wood, if you like, and moved into what was set to be a really exciting Q3. Talk to me about this strategy then. Russell Ocon and both McLarens going for used tyres for the first lap of Q3. So am I right in thinking it's one less set of tyres for a sprint weekend anyway? So mm -hmm. why did they make that, that, that call? I think they probably just want to get like a banker lap in, like, okay, sure. we'll use, yeah, like, I think they want to have like their perfect tyre right at the end kind of thing. So the way to do that is sort of put in a lap that probably is not going to get you pole, obviously, like, you're not going to get that on a, on a, on a scrub set of tyres. But if you can be quick enough to sort of get, I don't know, like P6, P7 as a as a reserve, just in case your your first lap goes, I mean, or your quickest lap goes, sorry, like we saw with the sure. like, that's just sort of why they do that. And like you said, like, during the spring weekend, you've got to really be careful with your, your tyres, how you're using them. And the strategy, again, that comes into that, like you want to be on the best on the best tyre as the track's getting the best it can be at the very end of the session. That Those three things combined take quite a lot of planning to do. Absolutely. And Leclerc flew out the, uh, the traps, really, two tenths ahead of Stappen after those initial laps. Max was complaining with understeer after Q2. Mm -hmm. Was he kind of setting up his excuses because he knew he wasn't at the races? It felt like that to me. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's probably probably right. Like he's had it. He hasn't had it easy, but he's definitely had it easier than he's had today. Like I think the thing yeah. that probably was most not annoying, but like the most challenging thing was like it wasn't just one team this time. Like we've had times where it's been like McLaren are really quick, or Ferrari are really quick, or Mercedes are really quick. But this time it was like all three of them are doing really well. Like we had the situation where it was like Leclerc's gone top, Hamilton's gone top, and then Norris has gone top. Like. There's so many other drivers that can put in a lap. So, yeah, maybe he was feeling the pressure. And ultimately, that's what led to him making a mistake. Going into turn one, like, he, he locked up. And, yes, officially, it was later on that his track was deleted. But it all it all kicks on from that first mistake where he goes to turn one, he locks up, he loses a load of time. And there from then on, he's got to try and pay catch-up. So he's going as quick as he possibly can. And ultimately, he's gone off the track by a little bit, but enough for the stewards, like, that's gone kind of thing. So, yeah, not an ideal session for him. And, like, even though he's, I think, even though he started P, he's going to start P6. Like, that's quite bad for Max's levels of where he's been this year. Like, Absolutely. Anything, yeah, anything lower than second, he's going to be annoyed with. So, And not on that front row, as you say. Um, you, you mentioned there lots of teams competing. It wasn't kind of individuals or team versus team. I think we had four different teams in the top five after the, mm -hmm. the initial laps. Alpine deserve a shout out today. Both mm -hmm. Ocon and Gasly getting to, to Q3. Um, after a really turbulent week in terms of investors and all sorts of outside things for them. Um, but you mentioned earlier, Max Verstappen was not happy with, it seems, Checo or maybe the team sending Checo too close to him coming around that, that final corner. I always feel with Max, he's had it very easy this year, but the slight mm -hmm. moments of trouble, you know, he's not he's not a happy bunny and he wasn't today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that sort of feeds into who he is. Like, I think he's just an ultra competitive person. Yeah. And I think for us, we'd think, OK, he's won it. He's won all the championships. Like, he's got all these records. Like, maybe he's going to settle off. And I think that's probably why he's so good is that he gets annoyed by the smallest of things. And I think it's also to do with like the he's just personality is very blunt it's very upfront and i think the people in red bull know that and they sort of they they're used to it so like, but when we hear it on the tv it sounds a bit like he's furious all the time but yes it's not really the case i don't think i think he's he just moans about everything and like they sort of just take it on board so yeah but that's just, that's just the ultimate old like ultimate competitor in him like he wants to be the quickest in every session regardless of how important it is and in this case it wasn't important at all because his, his season's essentially over he's won the title yes but he still wants to win like every single race he wants to get pole just because that's who he is that's who he's always been and that is why he is an incredible champion and i'm sure continue to do so he was five thousandths quicker than leclerc but that was the the one that got deleted um but that was you know sometimes these track limits like that was quite close i mean max was in a bloody part of different part of america um, yeah but it's a, it is a tough track, as you were saying. Let's talk about that top three then. Leclerc, Norris, Hamilton. Really lovely to see different mm -hmm. names kind of floating around. I felt that Lewis has had a spring in his step this weekend as well. Those new upgrades seem to play to his strengths. Yeah, he definitely seems like he's enjoying the car. Like, I think early on in the session, like, he was seen like the driver that was most, like, sort of wrestling with his car. Like, it was sort of every bump it was really feeling. Like, there's a few corners where he, he was holding, holding it together. But come the end of the session it was so smooth like just the way he was doing yeah. it i think yeah the fact that he's up there is is going to be really good and i think their car's probably maybe one of the best over the, the race distance i think like sure. the ferrari and the crown look quick over one lap but i think over over a race distance like if max is far enough behind that he can't overtake and that's a big if i appreciate that but 
I think Hamilton could be, could be in a t- in, obviously he's in contention because he's P3, but it definitely like looks like it's got a realistic chance of maybe winning this race. Absolutely. And it could be interesting because in the last 10 years, no one's ever won that hasn't been on that front row. With Max back in mm-hmm. six, he's surely going to get near. Hamilton looking at one with a car. Quick shout out to McLaren because I don't feel that they had the best session, Piastri down in, in 10th, but Norris somehow pulled out a P2. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought it was a really great lap. Yeah. And I sort of mentioned this, Williams, like, you can obviously like sort of work out where a car's supposed to be by the two drivers. And I think P10 is probably quite a fair reflection of the McLaren car that this track, like it's just not the kind of track that would suit the McLaren car. So that just makes Lando Norris's lap look incredible. Like it was so good. Yes. I like I was watching on Sky and Martin Brundle like was amazed as soon as it happened. Like, yeah, like if he's impressed, like he must be really good. Like I think that's just driver skill, just sort of getting an extra 10% out of it. And like, even afterwards, he said he was a bit annoyed he thought, before he made some mistakes. And like the fact he got P2 and still said that, like, that's that's an amazing lap from him and like fully deserved because he's been in such good form lately, like really consistent. And I think the fact that it's his 100th Grand Prix this weekend sort of just shows right. that he's one of the more experienced guys now. We sort of don't appreciate this because he still looks he's like he's about 12, but he's got <laughs> yeah. such a baby face that we think he's still a rookie, but obviously he's not. He's, he's been in Formula One a long time now. So he really knows what he's doing. I'm looking forward to seeing the race, like see what he can do, yeah. see if he can. He's all, I like going into that first corner is going to be great. Leclerc and Norris Very side by side, the really tight left hander. Like, yeah, I think that's going to be a great start to the race. I think whoever comes out on top, they're probably going to start speeding away. So like, I think that's really important that first that first corner. Indeed, and if they get involved, then Hamilton will just kind of sweep in behind mm-hmm. and, and take the lead. And finally, with Leclerc, Ferrari, a quick word on them. Um, they seem to do well on sprint weekends. It, this kind of format suits them. Why is that? Um, and they always look good over one lap, really. They have done for a while. Yeah, I, I don't, can't tell you about the sprint weekend. Like, something just works for them. Maybe yeah. the lack of practice time for other people just makes them a bit more even. But yeah, Leclerc in particular this weekend has like, looked really good, looked really quick. Like Even from the, like Q1, he was putting some really fast laps in. You're thinking, okay, wow. Like For a driver, like if we look at Ferrari, it's sort of been Carlos Sainz, who's been the driver in former yeah, late. Definitely. Obviously, one in Singapore and he had another few good results after that and Leclerc sort of taking a step back but I think qualifying has always been Leclerc's like greatest talent like he's really good at getting that that really quick lap I think he sometimes when he's chasing someone like Verstappen he's putting too much risk and it's sort of not paid off but in here it was the perfect risk versus reward kind of balance and like fully deserved like it was an incredible lap and I think throughout the session you were getting an idea that he's going to be the one to beat and yes Verstappen did beat him but he obviously went off the track so it doesn't really count so yeah, I think Leclerc, like, I, uh, we're waiting to see in the race. Like, I'm less confident about the race. Like, I feel like if he did something similar in the sprint qualifying tomorrow, like, he's got a better chance purely just because sure. the sprint race is shorter. But I think over race distance, like, I still don't really trust that Ferrari. <laughs> like, it's very yeah. quick at times, but other times it will just eat for his tyres or it's have an issue. So, like, we'll see. We'll see. You're right. Or the engine will just shut down. That tends to happen with Yeah, it, it can do um, that let's, <laughs> let's wrap up with some predictions and I'll, let's skip over Saturday. I treat that as a completely different entity and like a different weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and on to the Grand Prix on Sunday. Leclerc and Norris front row. Hamilton in third. What's your final podium? Who's winning this one? I mean, it's boring to say Max. So I'm not going to say yeah. Max. Even though I probably <laughs> secretly think Max is going to win. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go Hamilton, Leclerc, Norris. Just the top three mix up a little bit. Just moved around. I, I'd, I I agree with you. I think that'll be the podium. I'm not sure in what order, but I guess mm-hmm. that's a sitting on the fence answer. But I think you're right. That turn <laughs> one's going to be, that is going to be critical and it has been in years gone by. Um, mm-hmm. I think we're in for a really exciting Grand Prix. Yeah, me too. Like, this is definitely one to be excited about. Like, Red Bull starting further back, that makes it exciting. Three different teams in the top three. Like, yeah, there's a lot of reasons to be excited. And like I said, that turn one is just so iconic with a huge US flag. Yes. Like, it's such great shots. So, like, I definitely, if you're going to tune in for any part of the race, the first two minutes is, yeah. is what I'd recommend. Then you can go. I, I agree with you. And I'll tell you what, now Max and Rebel have wrapped it up. It feels like first weekend of the season. It feels like we're ready to go again. It feels like a huge little yeah. mini season. It's going to be good. Sam, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for joining us this evening as well. We've been on Track GP. We're back for the sprint race tomorrow and the Grand Prix on Sunday. So do join us. Remember to like, subscribe as well. Take care.